Whether you're making the same breakfast that you have every day or baking a cake for an extra special day, eggs are a staple in our diets. Eggland's best eggs are nutritionally superior to ordinary eggs, containing six times more vitamin D and double the omega-3s. Not only are they better for you, but Eggland's best eggs taste better too. There's a reason that they're America's number one eggs. Visit egglandsbest.com for additional information and delicious recipes. This is a Bramble Jam podcast. Oh, hi. <laughs> God. It's Brand, and I love Lifetime Christmas movies. I'm Dan. I despise Lifetime Christmas movies. I'm Alonzo, and I am so taking Lifetime Christmas movies on a case by case basis. And this is, is the Deck, Deck the Hallmark, Hallmark Podcast. Podcast. Deck the Hallmark is this podcast. Oh, boy. Hello. Hello, everybody. Another Monday. Monday, Monday, Monday. Ooh. Amazing. This, Very exciting. This Monday's hitting a little different, though. What do you mean? Because it's the last Monday in June, and three days ago, Hallmark kicked off the old Christmas in July five days early. Woo. So we're yeah, in for boy. it. You don't yeah, feel right. it in the air, Brian? No, of course I feel it in the air. I'm listening to Christmas music. I'm drinking out of my Christmas mugs. I'm in, baby. You're in. I'm in. You excited about the new boy coming out? Oh my gosh! Are you kidding me? You excited uh, uh, about uh, all the Christmas, Christmas clashing in the snow? What is it? A clashing, crashing through the snow. Through the snow? What did you think it snow. was? A Christmas, a Christmas clashing, clashing in, in the, the snow? snow? You saying? You're saying? What are you saying? Crashing? 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 Lightning crashes. No, no. Bobby Campo who dies? <laughs> Bobby Campo dies? <laughs> what? What? He's not, not if I have anything. No, not if I were. I love Bobby Campo. Bobby Campo. <laughs> you know what's crazy? Nobody like clamors for Bobby Campo until he makes a movie. Yeah. And then people are like, he should make more movies. And you're like, you're not talking about him when he's gone. Yeah. It's like if Tyler Himes didn't make any movies, people would go nuts. They'd be just storming the Hallmark Castle. But Bobby Campo is no one is just no one says his name. And then he makes one movie and he's like, why doesn't he do more stuff? I mean, I'm just here trying to fight for Bobby Campo, <laughs> doing it the right way. Um, Even yeah, though I've just peek, he's peekaboo, you don't see him any good. He's right. starting like a new way. nonprofit that fights for Bobby <laughs> yeah. Campo rides. And like, I've, ne I've never liked one of his movies <laughs> ever. But you just want you yeah. want him to uh, have equal opportunity. That's right, crashing through the snow, that's man. Exactly and that right. Bobby Campo is not in it. Not in that movie. And that's a crime. Clear. That's a crime. And we're here to tell. What's get out the in front point? Of it. What's right. the point that's of right. having a throwaway Christmas in your life? It's not including Bobby, Bobby Campo. Campo. That's right. That's a very fair question. That's I think what we're trying to get. To. We're gonna have a lot of fun over Christmas in July. Oh my gosh, so much fun! On Monday, we're covering the lifetimes. We got like five or six lifetimes yes. we're doing on Mondays. Yes. You can find them on Philo. Yep. The rest of the week, we're 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 doing other things. It's going to be awesome. Yeah, Christmas and stuff. Christmassy. Some fa from fan favorites out some of fan uh, that are, that are yeah. over the, the mm. next month. So very excited. I always hey, feel like we're going to run out of those, but we don't. Speak, speaking of fan favorites, if you didn't already make it a point to do so on Leon Day, it's a great time to pre-order I'll Be Home for Christmas movies. I mean, <laughs> come on. The Deck the Hallmark book on coming out in September. On September 28th, when that, that opening day arrives, you're going to want to have that book already chipped to you. You're, you're not going to want... your hands. You're not going to want to be like, oh, now I need to go and buy this. You're going to want it, you're gonna want it right there because they're gonna run out yeah. of paper. They're gonna run, that's that's <laughs> it's that's true. what I've heard. You're gonna run out of paper. They're gonna, there is a paper gonna, shortage. There gonna, is a paper shortage. They're gonna run out of Kindles too. They're and gonna if, run out of them. You want it, you want to get on that right now? Well, I heard uh, I heard they're like going to send them all to space or that's something. Right, I don't right. know. Yeah. Um, but if you, uh, I heard that if you don't um, pre-order by the fourth of July, you uh, you lose your opportunity. To pre-order. Yes. That's a really dumb thing to say out loud. That is so not true. At all. <laughs> you you lose your opportunity to pre-order before July 4th. After that, you still can. It will just be after July 4th. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> There's nothing special. <laughs> you will never the, again have the opportunity the, to pre-order right. <laughs> before July 4th. The guy who sacrificed... Uh, three months of pre-order sales for one week is the same guy that told you to invest in Dogecoin. <laughs> and I want to be very clear about that. To the moon. <laughs> to the moon. Did you see the video of the guy? There was a, uh, a Bitcoin convention in Miami. Oh, no. I bet that's funny. <laughs> 
It's just a bunch of, hey, what's going on? <laughs> uh, and some guy ran on stage and pulled off his clothes, and it was he had a Dogecoin like, suit on him. Yeah, right? he did. And he yelled to the moon, <laughs> and they tackled him. That's who we invested with. That's exactly right. Mm-hmm. That's exactly we right. We did it. It's the dogs and whatnot. <laughs> Um, speaking of dogs, a uh, very <laughs> merry toy store. Oh. Very oh. merry toy store. Bang, bang, bang. No, I'm not giving anything yeah. away yet, boys. Don't worry. Ooh. A very merry toy store, which we can all agree that's not a good name, right? Bad name. Like, it's bad it's name. a bad name. Like there had to also, be other. There are two very merry toy stores. Yeah, come on. Well, well, no, wait and a minute. One not merry one, but also at the end. Sure. Okay, but then then the title is a spoiler. That's true. Uh, <laughs> to be fair, last week we covered a very country Christmas. Uh, yes. When we decided the schedule, I was out of town, and so I was looking up the movie, and I thought it was just because later in the text message we had shortened it to Country Christmas. There's mm. a 2013 movie called A Country Christmas, and it stars Kix Brooks, I believe, as Santa Claus. Oh and my. it's free on Prime, so that could be in our future. But also, giving it away. I've had nightmares Ooh. about it. <laughs> and um, if you guys don't watch that before July Fourth, you lose your opportunity to watch it before <laughs> July Fourth. So don't. don't let that. There's not a movie called A Merry Toy Store, though. That's, no, that's but you're thing. basically saying seize the day is all you're saying. That's all I'm trying to that's say. That's all you're saying is seize the. That's day. all I'm trying to say. Sure. Make today the best day that it can be by pre-ordering. I'll, I'll be, be on for Christmas, Christmas movies. That's all I'm saying to say. Um, are we ready to dive into this movie? And don't accidentally oh, yes. order like a, a DVD of I'll Be Home for Christmas with Jonathan Taylor Thomas. Oh, like, no, don't, no, no. Don't do that. Yeah, like, do it on it purpose. You're welcome. <laughs> we I'll made be it easy for, Christmas for you. movies and then go yes. ahead and get the book. That's a book. Do That's that. That's uh, Jessica Biel's best work. Yeah. Is it? It's bold. That or skincare. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Seven, very merry seven. Toy Story. <laughs> I want to tell you guys that at one point, when early on in this venture, we were brainstorming podcast ideas, and Dan and I had this idea for a daily show that we would act as if it took Took place place in 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 1996, and we would respond to the news of the day. And we acted like we were there, and it was a time capsule, and and so we didn't have, but we did have the foreknowledge. We did, we did, yes. We did a full week, and it was the most we've ever worked and planned anything ever. We do a full Seventh Heaven episode, and you'll never hear it. Unless yeah. you join Brainwell Jam Plus That's and you right. can find it there. That's right. Yeah. And some people loved it and some people hate it. Alonzo? Alonzo. Uh, look, it may be because I was in 1996. And so. Uh, Alonzo, I, I believe Guys, his response was. We, 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 I just want, <laughs> in case you don't know, the dad in Seventh Heaven who pays a pastor is an awful person. Awful. Yes. We know that don't knowledge that. now. We're not supposed to in 96. Gotcha. It makes for a lot of good jokes. I, really, I mean, I, we, there were some people that were like, you have to go forward with this. And other people like Alonzo that I believe his comment was, when is the punchline? <laughs> <laughs> that is the punchline. I want to say I was one of your earliest and most <laughs> fervent supporters. No, just because I don't love everything what, y'all do. No, what I appreciate <laughs> about my friendship with Alonzo is that he's just honest all the time. So when you do something well and he says it's good, you know it's true. Like we're not, you, you know. There so, you go. but Alonzo seems- was in the camp of why are we doing this? And he was not alone. He was not alone in that camp. There were plenty of people in that camp. The guy who plays Reverend Camden just seems like he's going to have such a good career. Good career. He's Seems a good like a guy, like guy. a really good dude. That's a fun bit. It didn't seem like he was acting at all. No. It seemed like he was just straight up. Yeah. <laughs> this this Bill Clinton, it was during an inauguration. <laughs> <laughs> this Bill Clinton, like I trust him with, yeah, my, I, with my kids. That, that, <laughs> I mean, that's this funny. is the gold you had to leave on the floor. <laughs> that's yes. right, yeah. You get it. Listen, yo guy, guy was not going to make it. So the Macarena got big. We did a Macarena episode. <laughs> that one wasn't the best. We, one. <laughs> we learned the Macarena. It was gold. It was gold. Yeah, Re- I think Re- we played an audio clip of Regis learning. <laughs> <laughs> Man, this is got. We it was just so much work. So we much had to like timeline it and like make sure it lined up the actual day. Like we weren't messing around. No, no. And you know what we, our motto is. Yeah. If What's funny we is... We have to work. We're not... The least, whatever we work the least at seems to be the thing that people love the most. So, you know, whatever, whatever. It wasn't going to be that. Funny how that works. Yeah. It's crazy. Um, all right. A very merry toy store originally aired on Lifetime. 
on this uh, November 26th. Ooh, it was a, like a Thanksgiving Ooh, big boy. Ooh. week, like probably competing with CCB or something. Yeah. See if those dates line up in, uh, in 2017. <laughs> um, and it went a little something like this. Connie and Will are rival toy store owners. Uh, Forrester Toys and DeNova's Toys. They uh, are side by side in this strip. And um, they have the same, the same toys, the same deals um, in the same small town in the year 2017. Uh, both toy store owners, they're very good at their jobs. And they're, uh, they care a lot about their customers. And they seem to be on the up and up. Connie lives with her brother Randy, uh, her son TJ, and her mom on Zelda from Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Will is a divorced man who is looking to buy back his childhood home before Christmas because, quote, he just has to have it. Imagine a world where a third toy store moves into the same town that already has two toy stores in 2017. That's exactly what happens with Roy's toy stores. Uh, At the town diner, uh, Connie and Will come together and they agree that this is bad news bears to come up with. There's a third toy store coming in here. Get out of here. Will, um, uh, they, they want to kind of, they want to pull their resources together to buy time to make sure that the town can shut down the Roy's toy store, but the Roy's toy store can't get shut down by the bit, by the business people until the 24th. Is that correct? It's it's airtight. It's airtight. airtight. (laughs) So the store is going to open for two weeks and then they're going to vote on whether or not it can remain open. So basically they're just trying to survive two weeks of Roy's toy store. And that's harder than you might think. Um, And so uh, their first move, pancake breakfast. (laughs) And so um, they're going to do a pancake breakfast to compete with Roy's big uh, grand opening. And apparently this town just freaking loves pancakes because no one shows up for Roy's toy store. Big opening. Um, He shows up at the pancake breakfast and just looking at him, I can see why. And he uh, makes a makes a big old like, hey, everything's good, man. We don't have to worry about anything. He's all chummy, chummy. But then he kind of we see him making a deal. There's this big toy that's coming out. Princess Alicia. Princess Alicia is being pre-ordered and delivered to the stores um, later next week. You got to be there on Tuesday to That's pick exactly up exactly right. But you had to have pre-ordered the stores had to have pre-ordered the the dolls in October in order to get them because there's a limited yeah. supply. Roy wasn't one of those people that did that, so he does this whole thing to have the delivery driver bring the dolls to him instead. Connie and Will said, no way. Um, So they called the delivery driver personally, pretend to be somebody else, and have the the dolls rerouted back to them. Uh, Working together brings them together. They have a really good time doing it. They're laughing. They're having a lot of good time. Turns out that it was all for nothing because Roy booked a pop superstar to sing at the store and no one cares about dolls after that. <laughs> Connie and Will keep hanging out as Will is helping her son build a bobsled. And they're having a lot of fun doing that. Speaking of bobsleds, apparently this town with three toy stores also has a bobsled race that people care about. Roy sponsored a bobsled because that's a Roy thing to do. Connie talks trash to him about that. They push these children down a hill and it's truly an incredible race to watch. I implore you to go watch this race. Roy's kid crashes, flies out. I think he's dead. He's alive, everybody. Everything's fine. Later at the Christmas Town Festival, Connie and Will dance together and end up uh, opening up to one another about what's going on in their lives. Connie admits that she struggled with opening up since her husband died, and they take a little stroll. The two stop by some Christmas trees, and they kiss. Um, later, they're on the couch cuddling, and Roy's toy commercial comes up and says that they're doing an 80% off deal, and that's not going to be good for the local fellas. Uh, they're not going to let that get in the way, though, because uh, Connie breaks into Roy's headquarters, yells at him, quotes scripture, and that still does nothing. Roy offers her a manager position at the store to, and, and to pay off the debt that she owes. She says, no sir re. 
Um, Will does get that same offer and he says, yes, sir. <laughs> Not a problem. Connie is very sad. The town council is finally time for them to rule and they say we're going to keep Royce. But when Connie's brother realizes that he saw Roy making a deal with one of the council members taking a bribe, he says, this is a bad guy. Seeing uh, that they made a mistake, Will shows up and he says, Roy, you're a two-faced liar. And then he says this golden line, I'm going to stick with working with humans. You told him, A.C. Slater. Then he tells Connie that he paid off her debt that she owes with the money that he saved for his house. What a guy. Uh, Connie and Will reviewed the security footage that they had thanks to a stalking that was pointing in the wrong direction. Turns out that uh, that Roy was bribing, and he is a bad guy. Go what? figure. The council guy, uh, they found out, and they say, you're out of here, Mr. Roy. Get out. High fives and hugs all around. The movie ends with the combining, <laughs> the combination it. of their stores. They get married at the store. They kiss, and that, my friends, was a, a very, very merry Toy, toy Story. Story. <laughs> There's a snake in my uh, boot. Combining. Combining. Uh, combining. I mean, it's just com- combination. Combination. Yeah. That's exactly right. We're going to take a quick break. We're going to come back. We're going to break this movie down here on Daytona. Brand. It's right around the corner. Christmas in July. It, it's here. It's here. It's here. Hallmark started it early. It's happening right now. Even though it's not July 1st. It starts right now. It, it's already started. Exactly it's Christmas right. and it starts right now. That's exactly How right. How am I going to watch all the movies? Well, Brand? I will give you one Not guess. just the Hallmark movies. I want the Lifetimes. I want the Ups. I want oh. all of them. Well, then you just made it so easy. Because I want to introduce you to Philo. Oh, Philo wow. has all the channels that are playing the holiday movies during July. With unlimited DVR, it truly is a wonder to behold. Mm. And you want to know what else is a wonder? The fact that they're giving our listeners 25% off by signing up right now if you go to the philo.tv slash dth that's philo.tv slash dth you're gonna get 25 percent off your uh, your order for two months two months two wow. months save those movies watch them all july long and follow along here on deck the hallmark philo.tv slash dth Oh, a very merry Toy Store lifetime 2017 mario lopez uh, Melissa Joan Hart. This was, I believe, uh, t- hey. 10 years since uh, Holidays and Handcuffs, which was their first holiday movie together. I do have a little tidbit for you. Okay. Uh, CCB's Switch for Christmas. You may remember it as episode two of Deck the Hallmark. Did, in fact, air on November 26, 2017, opposite A Very Merry Toy Store on Lifetime. Uh, Lifetime was saying, okay. What can you tell me about those ratings? Oh, well, Switch for Christmas was bonkers. I think it's her biggest movie ever. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think it, it, it was at the time a record breaker yeah. for the Hallmark Channel entire. So I'm sure so. that Was it, this a record breaker for Lifetime? I have no idea. I don't know anything about it. Don't know. Keep, we'll yeah. keep doing the research, everybody. <laughs> I'll do it. We'll crack this down is on it. <laughs> listen, you can't yeah. rush it's gonna, yeah. good Great research. That's right. Um, very Merry Toy Store. Um, Alonzo, uh, I'm going to start with you with the hot take. Had you seen this movie before, um, and what did you think about it? I, I had seen this movie before, but didn't really remember it all that much of it. Um, you know, I think MJH is the CCB of Lifetime. Um, she's their, like, sort of Christmas big gun. And, uh, you know, she's now, like, directing. I think she directed last year's Feliz Navidad, also starring Mr. Lopez. Um it's, you know, th- th- here's the thing. Melissa Joan Hart and Mario Lopez have been cracking wise on television since they were in short pants. So they totally know. So they the were in rhythms. short pants. What does that mean? It's an expression. Like since they were little kids. <laughs> since they were in shorts. <laughs> I mean, you can wear shorts as a grown up, can't you? Okay, maybe it's an expression that has outlived its use. But anyway, what? since they were pussy cat. <laughs> thank you. Since they were tweens, let's say. Since they were tweens, they have been doing this sort of like jokey joke joke yeah. joke stuff. And you know, so they are they have it, they have the mechanics of it down. So there are, I think, a few more actual laughs in this than one might generally find. I will, however, um, suggest that if you do not have the budget to shoot a bobsled race, oh. then maybe you don't make 
make the bobsled race a central thing oh. in your screenplay. Just throwing that out there. A little bit of advice for you uh, uh, first-time writers out there. Oh, my um, gosh. Yeah, that was bananas. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's you know it it, it, it I, I I this one I, I think I'll, I'll say this this movie gets the stakes right which they don't often in these in terms of like the competition against the big guy, although it it it, it it's solved in a totally phony way that you know this guy would out lawyer them and it wouldn't matter that they caught him taking bribes and all that other stuff but it's you know it's. Meh. It's better than uh, our last Lifetime movie, uh, All About Christmas Eve, but it's kind of whatever. Mm. Man, Switch for Christmas got over 5 million viewers. That's crazy. Wow. Man, that was prime. It's double CCB. What yes. are you going to do? Double CCB. <laughs> two for one. Two, two, two. For two, one. two. That's right. That's exactly right. Um, yeah, um, this movie, it was just wild. Wild. It was a wild <laughs> thing to behold. There's a lot of weird. To Alonzo's point, the bobsled race is, uh, ju- you have to see it. Like, you have <laughs> you really to see do. it. You really but do. then, like, 10 minutes before that, th- it's as simple as just trying to show an empty lot of a toy store that they tried to do some sort of animation of that is just wild. It's, it is very bad. Um, this is also, um, for my money, one of the worst written, uh, made for TV Christmas movies I've seen. Like it, there are a lot of lines in this movie that are just like, woof. And I don't know. <laughs> there's just you a did lot. watch it with me, which didn't help things. No, I but I, even yeah. I would have noticed there's just a lot yeah. in this movie. That's just like, woof. Um, but I do like Melissa Joan Hart and, uh, Mario together. I thought, they were clearly having fun. It's just like a, a ma- like a mass, like you just have to, like there's three toy stores in this town. <laughs> like you have to be able to dive into that. Um, but you know, it, it was a, it was a fun movie. It's, there's just a lot of wow in this movie and not in a good way. Yeah. Th- most of these movies fail, you know, on a pretty tepid scale. So it's like degree of difficulty, two of 10 and you failed 10 of 10 out of two of 10. Right. But, <laughs> This movie fails epically. Like it, it really goes above and beyond the standard faceplant failure that we're used to seeing on Hallmark and Lifetime. There are some really big swings in this movie and some gigantic misses. They overestimate dearly how much a billionaire cares about two small toy store owners and what he's going to do about that problem. That is a wait what in and of itself. The billionaire being involved in the day-to-day operation of his toy store <laughs> Also, a big swing and a miss. And then we've not even, both of them have mentioned in their hot take this bobsled scene that only does George (laughs) Lucas proud. Like, I don't know why this is in this movie, but I was mesmerized at the absolute unmitigated disaster that was on the screen in front of me. Have you watched the Pee Wee Herman Christmas special? Uh, No, I've not. (laughs) <laughs> oh, it's a, it's a classic. You absolutely should. But there is a moment where Pee Wee and Magic Johnson are in a sled <laughs> that is then sort of animated through this yeah. thing. And that is like chillingly realistic compared to what the, they do in this bobsled race. The two kids involved here. I just want them all. I want to know what like. They, did they film it just in a garage <laughs> with with like uh, green screen drop cloths and like somebody's new Galaxy S8? Like what happened here? Like how did we get what we got there? And then somehow there are truckloads of talent in this movie. Brian Dennehy is yeah. in this movie. Uh, Beth Broderick is in this movie. Mario Lopez, Melissa Joan Hart, and all of them are trying to say some of the most stomach churningly <laughs> bad dialogue I've ever heard in these movies. And I still don't know what Melissa Joan Hart's brother is doing in this movie. I don't know what he's trying to get. I don't know what the goal of the character is. Uh, it is really bad, but memorably bad, right? Just memory. Like, and I would say, and here's the thing is I would say this is worse than the Haley Duff from last Ooh, week, wow. but I would say it's so memorable in its awfulness that I, yeah, I mean, I'd give it the edge. If I had to watch one of the two again, I'd be like, bro, you have to see this see pop the scene. <laughs> you have to see it. There's nothing I can do that will prepare you for what's coming. And by um, last week's Haley Duff, you mean, of course, weeks ago. Now. We, yeah, when I say last week. What you know, is we, time? <laughs> we, you know, we live in a vacuum right. where, where for us, we film all of these movies, you know, a, a week ago. <laughs> yes, everything's a week ago, man. 
<laughs> so, Everything's a week ago. Last speaking week, of a week ago. A royal I, baby, Christmas Prince. That's right. Last week. Speaking of a week ago, I have the rate ratings for Sunday, November 26, 2017. Um, so uh, Switch for Christmas got... Uh, it was one. Yeah. Basically, they got 5.2 million. The demo's wild. 50 plus... 3.3. Like, it's crazy, yeah, the 50 people. plus. Um, they they lost out only to um, The Walking Dead. What are you going to do? Gonna do? Somehow, still in 2017, was getting How's over it? 8 yeah. million. It's Good just uh, astounding. And way on down here <laughs> with Lifetime, where did it go? Here it is. Um, just over 1 million viewers. Which probably was huge for them. Over a million yeah, in, it was probably, in 2017, was a, that's a big number for them. Yeah. I would assume. One, uh, almost 1.1. 1. 1, yeah. Wow. There you have it. But the uh, 50 plusers are not showing up for a lifetime. No. It doesn't matter who you throw on there. <laughs> no, doesn't matter that much. Um, wild. It's wild. It's wild. Um, and I, yeah, I do think that is still the number one uh, Christmas movie of all time for Hallmark. I think so. Might be. Might I think be. Switch for Christmas is it. Well, well, Tracy will look that up too. We'll yeah, give you Trace, a, get to that. I mean, because the next year you had Shoe Addicts Christmas. Which we did, and it did not reach. It was the biggest of the year, but it did not reach the switch. And the next year was Christmas Town, and then the following year was uh, the one we just did, which I the the, the Wizard of Oz. The movie, only one, I just, if I only had Christmas. Yeah, the only one that's higher than Switch for Christmas is Christmas Under Wraps from 2014, uh, which had five point seven five. That's the one. Sorry, I got him confused. That is the one that was the yeah. record breaker for Hallmark, and arguably set like turned be turned the Hallmark Christmas movie into what, what it is today. Game. That makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But it is crazy to see that, like, it dipped back down into the fours, and then something about double Candace had double Candace caused the people <laughs> to come out and, and hurts. So, Man. like, Christmas Train didn't get those kind of numbers? Even wow. Christmas, wow. Christmas Train is not even on the uh, wow. top like, 10 didn't list it of all time. air on Channel and Movies and Mysteries simultaneously or something? Yeah, it was uh, the Hallmark Hall of Fame, too. Yeah. What year? Was that 2017? That's 17. 2017. Yeah, Ron Oliver. Yeah. We can, we, I can, I mean, I can do this. Yeah. Day, yeah. Guys, well, yeah. But you want yes, to, or do you want to let us carry let's on? Keep moving. Let's keep moving. Let's let, let, let with us this train wreck on. that we're working oh. on. Now. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's get to all the feels. Talk about the feels that we had in this movie. Alonzo. Well, you know, my feels were going to be Brian Dennehy, uh, because he's just good enough that he can loan a, a level of humanity to even sort of nonsense material like this. But then the script sort of betrays him in his final scene by making it clear that he's basically been paying Beth, Beth Broderick for her company all of this time mm-hmm. because he wasn't really interested in taking piano lessons. Yep. And he really just wanted to hang out with her and like flirt with her some more. So he like hires her to be his piano teacher. And that's kind of gross. Uh, so that sort of undid my one feel. Yeah. No, I, I said when the movie started, at least we're going to get Brian Dennehy offering the old guy sage wisdom from the diner. That's mm. what I thought we were getting with Dennehy. Like some great, like he, someone's in a crisis, uh, go get the girl or whatever. No, we get this guy being a creep by and large. And, and I, yeah. I couldn't believe it. I could not believe it. No one can. No one can. I mean, the feels that I had, I mean, I, I'm i trying to remember a time that I was so just enthralled by what was happening on the screen. Then that bobsled race. Like, it truly <laughs> was just something you will never forget. It gave me those feels. Like, I, I feel like I'm watching something had, that's going to last a lifetime. You like car it, accident onlooker feels. It was a, just amazing. Life last a lifetime. It was, I see what you it was, did. <laughs> it's truly amazing, and it did give me... Uh, it gave me feels. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I don't have any feels aside from my uh, disappointment of Brian Dennehy as well. But uh, I do want to let you know, Brian, that the Christmas train was 5.6 mil on Hallmark Channel. But across, they aired it on Hallmark Movies and Mysteries simultaneously. So 8.5 un- million unduplicated Wow. viewers oh, interesting eight, eight it doesn't say five. that on the wikipedia it's the number one wikipedia says that it only got 5.87 if you include I'm sorry 4.87 yeah if you include both it averaged 5.6 million and then uh, on movies and mysteries giving it an unduplicated audience of eight and a half million viewers That's why are we bonkers. why do we have different numbers i don't know i have no idea what's right i don't know what's right you gotta hate to see you it gotta, you, hate, you hate to see it you hate to see it mm-hmm. all we're trying to say is Lifetime, you got a long, a long yep. ways to go. Yep. Long ways to go. <laughs> yeah. If you're uh, if you're throwing this out there, I mean, Switch for Christmas was bad, but if you're throwing what we just watched yeah, out against, look it, at your it's, game. It's kind of on you. It's yeah. kind of on you. Yeah. 
Switch for Christmas is better than this. Yes. By a long shot. Sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but snowed in Christmas, Andrew Walker, Bethany Joy Lynn's better than anything else I've seen. And you put that on a lot of time. So they have come a good good ways at least. So there you Is go. that the same year? No, no, no. That was twenty eighteen. Eighteen. Okay. Eighteen. Yeah. Man, only a year. A year, a year later. removed. A year removed from this bobsled race and you get snowed. Oh. Uh, and wait till we get to Christmas setup. I think you'll be impressed. All right. And that's happening, I think, next week. I think so. Great. You tell me. I think so. <laughs> We're going to take a quick break. We'll come back and we'll get to the uh, what the uh, wait what's and the what the lifetimes here on Take We are back, and we're at the Wait What part of the show where we talk about what in this movie made us go Wait What. And I will start with you, Alonzo. Alonzo, what what, com- what what kind of confused you? What made you stop and say it? Oh, God, yeah, there might be one or two. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Well, I mean, as we've been saying, like, how does this tiny town in Connecticut support two toy stores on the same block? That's just bananas. Like, I get why the new toy store wants to come in because they're clearly like, well, all right, this town can, can clearly support two toy stores. Then obviously we can come in and crush both of them for the giant toy audience that exists in this town. But hey, um, so then when, when the big bad chain comes in and they're like, well, we're going to team up apart from a pancake breakfast, <laughs> what are they going to accomplish together that they couldn't do separately? Like none of that makes I, any I sense. I said it out loud when it happened, uh, <laughs> li- like just like, why does that matter? You both yeah. have debt, you have the same toys, and you have the same limited capacity. It yeah. doesn't do anything. You've combined weaknesses. <laughs> you've not, yes. you've not it's, done anything. It, it's, a, it's double the liability. Um, the, uh, so uh, Ro- Roy of Roy's Toys has this like lady sidekick <laughs> who they dress like a witch from a Sid and Marty Croft show. Like She's always got these weird hats on and just kind of skulking around. It's very strange. Yes. Um, Let's let's unpack the Princess Alicia doll for the moment. First of all, both the Melissa Joan Hart and the uh, uh, Mario Lopez toy stores have been taking pre-orders. Pre-orders yeah. in a in a brick and mortar retail establishment. Pre-order means that you have paid for it already. That's right, and that you're going to then show up and pick it up on the day it delivers. Correct. So even if that's right, Roy's Toys <laughs> brings in the pop singer to get everybody to go there on the day that the dolls launch. They have already paid for the to- for the dolls that are Doesn't at matter. the two other toy stores. So they can, so a good and it them, also they, they've got the money and the merchandise now. It also <laughs> delays it by a day like what does roy do like in that day aside Nothing. from just push back the people well, picking up their dolls it, like he doesn't get the dolls back yeah no no and doesn't. no one cares but the, 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 this is just the bigger point of you're right like they've already paid it doesn't help them money wise yeah. they think this is going to help them it doesn't help them money wise they've already got that money it's already in the bank and then they say later early in the movie she answers the phone and she's like you can pre-order it'll be here tuesday and they, she tries to get her to pre-order, but then later she says you had to have pre-ordered in October. The stores had to pre-order, so the stores had to put you. in an order. I got you with the doll. So they do have more dolls than the than the people. They that had are to in. make an estimate. Yeah. Yes, okay. um, but but I I just don't understand like what this guy does. Roy does at the end of this movie. If he wanted them gone. He should have just done at the beginning of the movie, which is, hey, come by, just get all your stuff cheaper here. That's what sure. pe- that's what they do. That's what yes. Amazon and Walmart, Walmart do. Walmart like, and all those guys. They yeah. don't go, man, I can't believe they're in business. They will say, hey, we love small business. You can just buy our stuff for half price. That's what they do. Like Roy, a, a two billionaire getting in the muck and mire with Lopez and Hart is the most unrealistic part of this movie, including the bobsled race. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that he's going to be the guy handing off the bribe to the city oh, councilman no and not way. like Lady in the Witch costume. No, no way. But but wait, there's more on Princess Alicia. In all the posters that we see in the Melissa Joan Hart store, Princess Alicia is a black character. Yep. Black animated, you know, Correct. Disney-type princess. Has a big song that that the character sings, you know, a la Frozen. When the pop singer who sings the song shows up at Roy's Toys, she is white. Yeah. 
Like, yeah. what is going on? I didn't know she movie? was supposed to be the princess. I thought she was just a distraction. I thought it was just a distraction. Does she th- like no, no, sing no, no, no. the theme they song? Hired, they, they hired the woman who sings the princess's song from the oh, movie, which no. Melissa Joan Hart sings along to in the car at one point. Oh, so yeah, the voice no. of Princess Alicia, the black character, is this white, skinny, you know, pop singer she lady. You can't have so, that one back. Okay, yeah. Wow. Um, <laughs> under the rule of don't have a bobsled race if you can't afford to show a bobsled race is don't show a band performing at the Christmas carnival if you're going to lay a whole other music That's track right. on yeah. top of it. What about accordion over here? Yeah, I, yeah, I, I <laughs> talk a little bit more about the, the band oh here in, in just a second. So it's a that, was, that was loony. Um, when Melissa Joan Hart thinks like she has lost it all and she's sitting at the diner having a glass of wine that wine is water. Is so white, it is water. It's yes, water. It is completely translucent, unless she's having vodka. Yeah, that is water in, in, that in a glass. wine in a wine glass, and it makes just no sense. And then you know when she gives the big impassioned speech about like the soul of the town and stuff, and it's like it just kind of kind of calls up this whole notion of like, oh yeah, this entire town is like as white as possible, yeah. except for like one dad and kid that we saw shopping for toys early on. <laughs> this is like, I mean, yes, I get it. It's Connecticut, but still <laughs> come on. Like, where are your, your, your people of color? It's, 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 it, and yes, obviously in this movie, that's the water we're always swimming in. And it, 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 it should go without saying, but I had to point it out. <laughs> It's a great job. It's a great job. I'll point out these that don't matter nearly as much, uh, such as, such as uh, her brother who's playing the weirdest Santa I've ever seen. <laughs> oh, uh, my gosh. And his, his catchphrase when the kid is leaving is handing him a bell and saying, ring this bell on Christmas Eve and I'll come visit you. He actually says, ring this bell on Christmas Eve and I'll come visit you. <laughs> well, Dear then I, I, I will. I shall not. I would advise against <laughs> yes. it. Um, I will melt this down. The guy that you guys both said that you thought you were going to like, but then he just did. Uh, Ryan Dennehy. Yeah, sure. Yeah, him. Uh, How dare just you? Just ended up, you know, <laughs> oh. you doing piano lessons just to hang out. Um, he also has... Uh, just I'm taking it as a a, 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 a real pervy line uh, because uh, Mario and uh, Melissa Joan Hart are at the diner and she uh, says something and then she leaves and Mario says uh, she really likes those dramatic exits and and he says I know I do and then like looks watches her watches leave. her leave it's really weird it's very weird and then he does yeah. this thing with his glasses. <laughs> I hate it when you leave, but I love to see you go. <laughs> yes. Oh my um, the band that you mentioned, Alonzo, I just want to point out, this is what that <laughs> band consists of. A keyboard player, an accordion player, a recorder player, <laughs> an acoustic guitar player, and tr- two trumpets. Yep. <laughs> That's the band. Yep. That's ding, the band ding, ding. that they got together. <laughs> and you wonder free, why everybody. they put another song underneath it. Because <laughs> no one wants to the hear that. The only thing I can figure is, is they were like, this will distract him from the bobsled race. That's all I got. <laughs> yeah. And I don't, um, I don't do this often, but I decided that I would take this one to the tape. Uh, and it is... Oh, this is bonkers. It is Aunt Zelda from Sabrina the Teenage Witch singing Itsy, Itsy Bitsy, Bitsy Spider. Spider. Which we all know oh, how wow, that yes. goes. And the itsy, itsy spider climbed up the spout again. No, not even close. Not even close. <laughs> is it not public domain? Do they have I, to come up with a new tune? It is just a completely, she gives a, it's and then a she remix. She goes back into it. The itsy bitsy spider <laughs> went up the garden <laughs> spout. Come on! That's a little pitchy, dog. Come on! <laughs> that's it's a, really hard to try and carry a two when somebody's playing piano badly behind you, but that's just beyond. Yeah, she's not spider. even spider. Spider! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, itsy bitsy spider the musical. If that if that 
sound the exclamation point. If that mm. sounds not a wait, what I don't know what is, boys. Good gracious, <laughs> Dana. Man. You know what? I really uh, admire Lifetime for having a movie about two little shop around the corner toy stores, while also making it clear that the film is sponsored by the Hasbro Pie Face game. Oh, thank you, <laughs> Hasbro in general, but especially Pie Face. There are giant Hasbro logos in both of these stores. They're massive. Like you would think, the store is named Hasbro, which is a <laughs> billion dollar company and there are pie face games everywhere and at one point melissa joan hart says no all you have to do is buy whipped cream and you're good to go <laughs> like i'm that's sorry. so true though i've played that game <laughs> like you're not you 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 as a movie sold out to the thing that you're trying to have these people rail against <laughs> it's a riot and big I toy mean, that's right big toy you <laughs> surrendered to big toy <laughs> oh, um, another another I'm, one bites the dust. i'm a little bit less concerned with Roy and his billion dollar empire if he's a he's worth two billion then his empire is worth probably way more than that but I'm a little less concerned with him and more concerned with the fact that the cast of the Sopranos took over the bank <laughs> because because the guy that uh, you that she has to deal with at the bank that's the middleman is Bobby Bacala like he's he's just tie <laughs> unloose and like I'll see what I can do for you no promises you know it's a balloon payment it's the big the bigs do like and then he goes and he's like won't be a problem then he calls her back and he's like it's going to be a problem i don't know why 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 i talked to why? vic i talked to vic it's what, going to be a problem what part of little italy in connecticut are they like where Look, are the where's this it, it, it's a town where mario cantone is somehow the yeah. mayor so we're getting there that's wrong. we're getting okay. there we've not mentioned mario cantone <laughs> to this moment but he is mario cantone is the mayor of this town which basically means that he just supervises all the meaningless activities in the town <laughs> including waving a red flag to start a bobsled race. <laughs> <laughs> he, he's waving a red. Now, I don't know if you know this, but you usually wave a green. Green means go here in America, by and large. He's waving a red flag to start the race. Okay, that entire <laughs> that entire bobsled race is green screen. So they're like, okay, that flag's going to disappear. Right. He, Use this red yes, this Christmasy. That you, 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 you beat me to it. He had to, because if he used a green one, it would have just been an invisible flag. <laughs> He'd be waving a stick. It is absurd. Mm. This Mario And Mario and Cantor is make no mistake very much just mario cantone in this movie <laughs> yeah. but he waves a red flag to start a race who also sounds like he might be related to tracy a little bit but just yeah. a little <laughs> bit go. he does what do you think small town mayor you know yeah. that's just, just your go-to i'm not questioning a billionaire because he's a billionaire but opening a store i gave you my liver <laughs> kidney <laughs> if you give somebody kidney. you give somebody your liver trace you're dead you can give part of your liver but not all of your liver not what I've read. <laughs> okay. I hope not at least. delivered. Ah. ah. Got him. Amy Teagarden. <laughs> no. No. No? Amy Teagarden. Yes. It is Amy Teagarden. Yeah, yeah Teagarden. jokes on you. I thought you said Aurora Teagarden. I, I would never. You would never. <laughs> um, I would wish somebody, never mind. Um, uh, next <laughs> on, on the list, uh, the angle that they're looking at <sighs> for this gas station and the angle with which the gnome in the stocking sits are two very different angles. They're like, the gnome caught it all in video, and the gnome is like eight and a half feet tall, and then the camera is clearly perfectly landscaped at like maybe a three and a half, four foot level. Through and no, the front window. Through the front window. You don't get anything else in the shot. You don't get anything at the store. It's just the window outside, and it really, really, really bad. How do they get the phone number of the delivery driver? I, this was killing me. They call mm. and pretend to be from somebody else, and they 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 give somehow give him. They, they call and they they get him to deliver the toys to them. How do they get his cell phone number? That's hard information to find in the middle of the night on a Sunday. Um, and <laughs> I'm, I'm not here to question a billionaire, but opening a toy store after December 10th <laughs> is just bold, man. Like that is just. Throwing bad money after bad money right there. Oh, that's right up there with a bank closing a small town toy store on December 24th. Yeah, and the board meeting to vote on whether he can keep his toy store open on December 24th. But he decided to open it after the 10th. I, I just, I question maybe that in general, why you would go about doing that. Uh, that is all I have, Brian. It's time for the what the lifetime is part of We wonder what could have been maybe happened to give some clarity to the questions that we still have. Alonzo? 
they go from being like lifelong feuding enemies to literally married yes. in a very, <laughs> yes. very whirlwind uh, uh, a relationship. And, you know, when, when I, at the, the notes on the top of the page, I, I typed out the acronym for this movie, which was uh, VMTS, and you could pronounce that vomits if you want to. Um, <laughs> but it got me thinking that would the sequel have the same initials and be a very merry trial separation? Just a thought. <laughs> I like um, that a lot. I I just you know I don't want to keep going back to the bobsled race, but I need to <laughs> just because I wish I could have been in the room where they get the final cut <laughs> and they watch it and they're like, like, we're putting this up against switched for Christmas, and we've got this. Like, just, was there any conversation about being like the like, bobsled race does just, not matter? Why? I just want to live in that space of silence <laughs> when they hit stop on the tape at the end of the scene with everybody in there in the room, and they hit and look, stop, and everybody's like, <laughs> "Well, I, I, this, I, I, this is the fi- this is the final cut." <laughs> well, it's the twenty fifth. It looks like this is as good as it's getting. This is after post. <laughs> uh, I don't want to tell Lifetime what to do, but maybe. Maybe don't hire Melissa Joan Hart's mother to direct the movie mm. and have a complicated bobsled sequence in the middle. Mm. I'm just going to throw that out there. It's a possibility. Maybe. Listen, hire her for a lot of good yeah. stuff. Sure. Just no not question. for bobsled racing, please, mm. for the love. And my last one is, you guys brought it up, but the city council doesn't meet until December 24th Classic. to decide if they're going to shut down Roy's, even though Roy's has been open at this point for two weeks, there is no reason given for why there has to be uh, two plus weeks between when they bring the complaint to when the complaint is heard in this small town with a city council of three people. No reason is given for why December 24th of all the days, yeah. Christmas Eve, we will vote on this. Why? But Why? Also, by the time he's gotten the permits and everything and built the place. Yes. You what can they do? Nothing. Nothing. They can't do anything. So stupid. Yeah, the, the the idea is that Melissa Joan Hart's character has dug up some obscure, like, codicil <laughs> to whatever city charter thing. But, yeah, it, it's everything. The wheels are in motion. He's rich. Like, of course, none of this is going to be happening. Yeah. Uh, my only one is, did Jeep sponsor the film? And the reason <laughs> I ask is because there's a Toyota in the movie and a Fiat in the movie that have been what appears to be blacked out with a with a Sharpie. Like, <laughs> you can kind of still see the T, but it's blacked out. The Fiat is blacked out. But the Jeep is not blacked out. And so I'm very curious as to if Jeep like put that in there or or what what happened there i just am, i'm very curious by that is jeep owned by hasbro do we Ooh. know <laughs> man now we're getting to now it because typically hallmark just allows all of them in there and they don't sure, have any yeah. of them sponsors so they'll just be a ford a chevy a honda it doesn't yeah. matter mm-hmm. but this clearly was all the rest were 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 blacked out aside from jeep which was weird yeah well if they did, were sponsored Money clearly did not go towards bobsled racing. No. No, <laughs> I'll tell you, not. if if you guys love the bobsled effect, which which we all did, so, sometimes this is a movie that's really hard to track down now. But I got to show you a film that was released in theaters called After Last Season which is the most visually bananas. Like, it's so bad that people thought, is this actually outsider art that I'm just not getting it? But no, it's just these insane, like, outdated computer graphics and, like, the kind of lighting where everybody's throwing really harsh shadows. And uh, just, it's, I I can't even begin to describe it. Uh, Literally, when the trailer dropped online, people thought it was like an elaborate art prank. So uh, we'll we'll have to, next time you're in Los Angeles, it's called After Last Season. After Last Season. uh, uh, if or or if, you know if I'm ever out in, out your way, I'll bring my DVD with you. It, it will blow your mind. Wow! Wow! That sounds great, man. And <laughs> I think that's uh, that might just count as your words of wisdom. And can't unless you have any others. I'll take it. <laughs> I'll take it as well, guys. Thank you so much for listening. Um, happy Christmas in July. We're we're it's happening. We're doing it. We're very excited about yeah. it. Yeah. Um, until Woo. tomorrow, may we be the first to wish you a Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas.
Deck the Hallmarks of Bramble Jam podcast. It's presented by Philo TV. It's produced by Brandon Gray and recorded live in, yeah, that Greenville, South Carolina. Set decor is by Plum at Haywood Mall. For more information on Deck the Hallmark, you can go to deckthehallmark.com. For more information on Bramble Jam Podcast Network, you can go to bramblejampodcast.com. Whether you're making the same breakfast that you have every day or baking a cake for an extra special day, eggs are a staple in our diets. Eggland's best eggs are nutritionally superior to ordinary eggs, containing more vitamins and 25% less saturated fat. Not only are they better for you, but Eggland's best eggs taste better too. There's a reason that they're America's number one eggs. Visit egglandsbest.com for additional information and delicious recipes.